Hey guys, Double Wide 6, and uh, today I have a little snow blower I'm going to be working on. Um, the thing will fire and then die like instantly, so we're going to tear into it a little bit. So here's a look at what we're working on. It's a uh, small Aaron's ST 2x2 Deluxe 5. Um, it's got a Tecumseh engine, it's a 5 horsepower. It has these little wheels that roll behind it, and it's kind of self-propelled by these uh, rubber paddles that are on the auger. Um, so I was able to pick this thing up pretty cheap, and uh, the guy that had it did some a little bit of work on it. You can see it has a uh, pipe fitting there on the fuel line. Uh, not working so well, though. So anyhow, uh, for this video, I'm going to give you guys a little overview of a leak down test. So when I fired up this thing, it, it, it basically fired up and smoked a little bit and then would die. So uh, I'm not exactly sure what's wrong with it, so I just want to do a leak down test. Um, the carburetor that's on here, the guy that had it, here's the story, he bought a carburetor for it. It's not actually a carburetor for a snowblower. Uh, looks like an aftermarket one. and. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure what it what it's for, but it doesn't have the. It's not going to fit this uh, heat shield thing. So um, he gave me the original carburetor, and if you look at this, he had this like JB welded on there. So I took this apart, and I was just going to clean this thing out. But this original carburetor has a pretty um, common mishap that happens here where uh, you could see this post that holds the float actually broke off there focus so uh, I don't know a way to fix that or or I would have done so um, it's aluminum so I guess it would need to be TIG weld and that aluminum rod welding stuff that's just like too hard to do um, I've never had really good success with it so anyhow um, I'm just going to buy a new uh, aftermarket carburetor. They work really well for these things. But um, I actually ordered the carburetor, and in the meantime, uh, I'm going to do a leak down test here. So um, when I tried to start this thing the, and it wouldn't fire properly, um, I did a compression test, and that's different than a leak down test. And... Uh, the compression on this thing was about, I got about 64, and it would fire, and you know, some smoke came out of it, and I don't know if that's because it's been sitting a while. I know the uh, problem's not the carburetor, because the carburetor is actually brand new. It's just not the, it fits, but it's not the right bottle uh, model for the air box. Um, anyhow, uh, what I want to do here is... Uh, perform the leak down test and what that'll tell us is if we have air going past the piston and the rings um, that would indicate that the rings are worn and the pistons could be scored up um, the other thing that you can do with the uh, leak down tester is you can check if your valves are seating properly so if you have air coming out um, the intake where the carburetor is, that would be a leaky intake valve. If you have air passing by the exhaust valve, that would indicate a leaky exhaust valve. Um, you can also tell if you have um, air coming out the head, you can tell that, like, that there would be like a leaky head gasket. So those are the things that I'm going to quick look for. Um, you know while I have it apart and you can see I already removed the muffler and uh, the intake for the uh, carburetor and I removed the uh, valve cover and you can see the valves there um, so now we're going to do the leak down test okay so to do the leak down test it's it's really a simple test especially after you have this stuff removed um, basically you want to set the engine at top dead center on the compression stroke and uh, I already did that so the engines at top dead center on the compression stroke and then all you have to do is remove the spark plug and you want to hook up 
your hose to your compression or your leak down tester. Um, one thing you should be aware of is the uh, engine can actually um, engage. Okay, so if you have like a lawnmower or something, with all the air pressure, you can uh, push that put piston down and cause the blade to turn. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put a vice grip or clamp this handle shut so that there's uh, some pressure um, on the uh, uh, auger so it won't try and turn or be held by the belt. So let me quick do that. Okay, I got the handle clamped off. Another thing I did is I removed the starter and I did that so I could use this cup to turn the engine over and uh, I turned it over, I got it to TDC and it's all ready to go and uh, I plugged in the hose here and this is the uh, the leak down tester that I got, the OTC one. This model um, I read about in forums and uh, you know I know it's like a a pretty good reliable unit where some of the cheaper ones are not um, the cheaper ones are like you know 35 bucks where this one's about oh I think it's under 70 and um, you know it's been very reliable in the past I've had it um, for a couple years now and what what you want to do is set it up I have 100 psi going into this thing the regulators on zero and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the regulator and the left gauge is my air pressure going in and I'm just gonna turn this thing up and you wanna start at zero and work it up to 90 and the reason you wanna do that is if you just add the air at 90 psi it'll kick that piston around or down and cause the engine to turn over alright so I got 90 psi going in and if you look at the leakage I'm about at 81 so um, I got about 10 percent leakage there and if you listen closely I don't know if you can hear it but um, this is the exhaust valve here and I can hear the air coming out past the exhaust valve so that valves definitely not seating the intake valve seems fine um, I don't hear or feel anything around the uh, head gasket and if you have air coming out through the uh, crankcase it's an indication that um, you know you have air leaking past the uh, piston and the rings um, there's a little bit of air in there but 10 percent leakage isn't bad at all um, and most of it I can tell is coming out here there's a little bit maybe getting by the rings um, no engines gonna be a hundred percent and uh, really what you're looking for is you know I'd say any engine uh, over over seventy percent should be okay. Um, so uh, you know anything more than a thirty percent leakage would be a problem. So what information did we learn from the leak down test? Basically, we have a bad exhaust valve that's leaking. Um, the the cylinder and piston and ring seem to be good. Um, there would be a lot more leakage if there was like a cracked ring or a lot of scoring because uh, we had that thing at like 90 psi so that's pretty good pressure and it, you know it was leaking slow I also need to check the valve lash so I'm going to do a valve job on this thing I'll pull the head and put in a new head gasket and then um, you know I can test it again and see if we uh, bring up the leakage mount also the uh, compression test that I did on it after I fixed the valves that should bring that compression up um, it seemed pretty low being in the low 60s there so I'm hoping I can get it up above 70 so we'll, we'll see if we can do that so here's a look at the kit it's the OTC 5609 
Um, has a quick coupler here. They give you a nice two foot hose. It comes with the box with uh, all the adapters and stuff. Um, up top, uh, you have all the directions, which is handy um, if you don't use it every day. And this drops right in there. And I will put a link to the description so that you can order yourself one of these. You can check it out. I know I haven't made a video in a little while, but, uh, you know, I have family stuff going on, as many of you know. So just stick with me. Don't unsubscribe. And uh, I'll keep bringing you videos. So check out the link and have a great day.